Okay. Let's let's kind of move on because we won't want to be here all day, and I asked people to sort of limit your comments to something new. But we certainly want to hear from uh, some people from law enforcement here. But Michael, you're next. I'll pass. You'll pass. How about yeah. you, please, Chief? Uh, Chief Goldstein, uh, Franklin Police Department. I'm representing the Chiefs Association. I'm here more to observe and report than anything else. Um, can you fill in the subcommittee on what sort of announcement? or directive you got from the Attorney General's office, the uh, patrol units and police departments got from the Attorney General's office after the Glick decision. When did that come down and just paraphrase what it said? Basically, In regards to traffic stops and such. Basically, we, no, thank you. Basically <laughs> we, um, we understand the realities of what happens in public, and yes, uh, to be recorded is fine. Um, there are always going to be very specific instances where we might be in public where we would object to recording. If this woman's children were abused and I was talking to them in public, I don't think that she would like this gentleman looking at us with a video camera while I'm asking them what part of their body they were touched. So these are things that go on in public with public officials. If I were abusing my kids or my kids, I'm not saying you, ma'am. I'm, I'm not saying you. I'm saying these are some of the things that we do. Now, a regular old traffic stop, I have no problem. And I think that many of my colleagues are just as open to that as anybody else because we do <coughs> practice transparency and accountability. At least since collectivism. <laughs> you know, before, <laughs> many of us before the Glick decision. Oh, oh really? And, and I yes. feel that sure the, Glick, the, the Glick decision yes. was also predicated on other I issues besides just I being recorded. So. There were issues of the officers trying to uh, absolve themselves of certain responsibilities that they did not meet. Uh, so I'm familiar with the Glick decision as well. But I think that right now the points have been brought up that there's, there are definitional issues here. That have to be um, right. that have to be addressed. You are not going to uh, come into the police department necessarily, or any police department, and be allowed total and free access to that department. Uh, whereas it's a public building, there are certain parts of it that are public, and certain parts that are very, very private. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily ed allow you to record in my office uh, unrestrained, so to speak. If the media comes to my office and says we'd like to conduct an interview, that's one thing. But if I'm talking to somebody, a member of the public or something in my office, that's part of a very secure, recognized secure area, a private area, mm -hmm. even though I'm a public official conducting mm -hmm. business. So there are definite, I think mostly what I hear are definitional issues. The other thing that I've heard a lot about is this eavesdropping. We don't do that. And I, I can take you back 30 years. And when we do a, a wiretap, for example, we're under something known as the Mincy Rule. And the Mincy Rule is that if we're listening to someone with a court order, with a, with a warrant, essentially, conducting a wiretap, if that conversation does not pertain to what we're there for, we have to minimize our listening capabilities. We have to turn off the report. So I can remember when I was undercover doing many, many uh, listening to wiretaps and so on and so forth. And, and what we were all, we all had to go through the training, even though we've been to it many times before prior to every wiretap. This is the Mincy rule. If they start talking about uh, recipes for apple pie, uh, unless that uh, refers to whatever the drug was, we had to minimize that recording. I have a couple questions about your department. Do you guys have security cameras? inside the hallways and inside yes, the offices? Yes. Do they audio record as well as video no, record? No, just video. Just video. Okay. For people that don't know, this is only about audio recording. That's all we're talking about today. Also, second question, when people call the Franklin PD, uh, are those calls recorded? Yes, only and on the public line. The public line, somebody calls in, looks up the number of the yellow pages, whatever they do these days, Google, they call that number, it's recorded. Is there an out, is there a message that beginning says your call may be recorded? No, because the courts have also informed us that there's a reasonable expectation of people being recorded when they call it a police department on a public line. Oh, did you get that on film? Interesting. So, 
people call Franklin Police Department, they, because it's a public a place of public officials, they have a reasonable expectation that their call could be recorded. Yes. So they're not, they're not, they're not they're told. Told. Someone has to a contract. And that's that. just at Franklin, though. Do you think it, that would apply at other PDs? I'm, I don't, I won't answer for other police departments. I know some have messages, some have a beep in the background that's an old style of, of letting you know that it's being recorded. Um, we're just functioning under, under what we've done. And it's, right now, it's been upheld. So would you? So you believe that if you're talking to some one of the people from Franklin calls in, I mean that's sort of a public conversation, right? If he calls you on the public line, correct? Not your personal cell, but on a, on a police phone, that's okay. Correct. Okay. And it's a public line, yeah. but not the reverse. Um, Ian, do you have a question specific to this? Uh, Just a point of clarification on about? something that he said about public buildings and kind of the idea that uh, recording could go on there. I don't know if the chief is aware of this, but there are certain public buildings where uh, video camera use is completely prohibited, as well as all audio recording devices. They include all district and uh, superior courts within the state. If I walk into a superior court with a video camera, I will likely be threatened and possibly uh, arrested. So it would seem to me that if uh, public officials are subject to being recorded, that that should apply in any public building in which anyone can walk yes. into. Not necessarily behind a locked door. Obviously, if I can't go through a door that's locked, then that makes sense. Well, we're lucky the chief's in a unique position, because not only is the chief, but he's also a member of the, he's the head of the association. So no, I just not. serve on the executive board. The executive board of the association. So you know what other chiefs do in different areas. So what do you think about that? Well, first of all, you're talking about the courts. Yeah, that's right. I don't answer for the courts. I didn't think you would answer. I just wanted to let you know that uh, recording is completely prohibited in, unless, inside these court, courthouse lobbies, unless which I think is outrageous. Unless the judge permits it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I think Hang even on. court employees should be held accountable, too. Exactly. Yeah, it's a, outside my... Outside, yeah, I see. <laughs> uh, the court judge, that's his domain. Yes. He makes the rules. Yes. We may not like them sometimes, but though he makes the rules. If he wants cameras in, he lets them in. If he doesn't, he don't. Point of clarification, but, we're talking about the court lobby, not the courtroom. If the jury is going to pass through that lobby, you can't have a camera there. Why? I can have a camera outside. I can record the jurors there. Or coming out the exit door when they're done. Yeah, jurors are supposed to be, in, have an, be anonymous. Right That's now, they... The, ju the, the, oh, judges, right. the judges are God right. in their courtrooms, but yeah. unfortunately there are buildings where it's not just the court in that building. There are other yeah, town right. offices, right? Um, That's part of the problem. Yes, please. Number one, the jurors are your peers. So they're equals. They are public. Uh, but the solution to the, uh, the question that uh, Ian brings up is very simple. Public space of public buildings not the private space of public buildings. Because if you say all public buildings, then you go into the ladies' room with a camera. And that's Once you go through that screening device, you are in a courthouse. Yeah, and that's, that's another question entirely as to where that screening device should be. Because the law says in court room, not court house. All right, well, let's, let's keep moving on. Uh, Chief, did you want to add anything else to this? No, thank Glad you. Glad you're here. No, appreciate, appreciate that. You. You're, uh, Familiar face in our committee. Um, please. Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Benjamin Agati. I'm an assistant attorney general with the attorney general's office. Uh, I'd be glad to take any questions from representatives. And if they do have some, but just um, our, my purpose here today is also uh, to observe and also to, uh, again, hopefully kind of address some of the issues uh, that, the, that the representative sponsored in this particular language is, is correct. This law was originally put in place a long time ago. It was put there as a protective measure uh, against new technologies that were coming out. Now, some exceptions came for when that technology could or could not be used. Since then, technology has changed to such a standpoint that it causes problems uh, not only under the two-party system that we presently have, it causes problems for law enforcement and for the public. So I believe your original question for us was uh, whether what our thoughts were on this particular law, House Bill 553. Uh, and with that, the Attorney General's office does agree that it is an attempt to try to fix the law as it stands. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to comment generally about whether a two-party or a one-party system. I think that's something separate uh, for legislatures to decide. But in terms of this particular bill, it is trying to fix a problem that is there for everybody. 
That's that's good. What's your name again? Yeah, yes, my name is Ben Agati. Ag Agati? Yes, sir. Like a Gary, same spelling, one R? A G A T I. No R. Oh, I'm sorry. A G A T I. It spells easier than it sounds. <laughs> You see the telemarketers when they try to call me. Okay. Uh, pardon my ignorance, but the same level as Anne Rice. You guys have the same type of job? No, sir. No, sir. She is the deputy attorney general. I am just an assistant attorney general. Anne used to be an assistant. She got kicked upstairs. She used to be an assistant. Then she was the associate. Call you all. She's now the deputy. She's now the deputy. I work uh, in the criminal justice bureau. I do primarily homicides and public integrity matters. I also teach at the law, at the uh, police standards and training for the full-time academy, the law package that they have. And I can tell you at least with regards to this question of what's been represented from Glitton, I can tell you for all of my classes that I have taught, when I have taught this particular statute for the last two and a half years that I've been teaching, I've been telling all of these officers that if they are in public and they're doing a traffic stop, and the person is not physically interfering with them and obstructing how they are trying to conduct their traffic stop, then yes, if there's somebody there with a camera on the other side of the road in a public space or a private space where they have a right to be, you are going to be recorded and there's nothing you can do about it. So you've been it. telling your people at the academy that for two and a half years? I can tell you for at least the two and a half years that I have been teaching there, when it comes time for teaching the wiretapping statute, uh, I have been instructing cadets that no public taping of their, of their actions while they're doing a traffic stop, which is typically the question that I get from them. Uh, as long as it is not interfering with their ability to conduct their investigation, that it is something that is lawful and is not a violation of the statute. That's so we've so been teaching that. before the Glick decision, you've been talking about that. And I can't tell you about the previous uh, instructors that may have been there prior to me. I can only tell you right. what I have. No, I understand. Uh, but I can tell you for, for that time period, we have been talking about that. And so the crowd knows that this committee has always been sensitive to video recorders not getting in the way of the police, right? We always make sure that's covered, that they're not interfering with their police. I can tell you of an example that I've gotten from a cadet recently uh, who asked me while he was with his field training officer, he was conducting a traffic stop. There was an individual on the opposite side of the street uh, moving up and down the street videotaping the stop. Uh, he went over there and said, is there some sort of problems or anything going on? And apparently was related, no, I'm just taping it. He asked me, was that we didn't do anything, should we have done something under the statute? And my answer was no. Uh, no, you should not have done anything. It's, it, we have been, at least for the two and a half years, we've been instructing our new cadets going through the full-time academy uh, to be in compliance with Glick before Glick was even around. Right. Okay. Thank you. Have a question for him about that? Yes, sir. Yeah. However, had that gentleman on the opposite side of the street used an amplifying mic, he would have been technically in violation of 553 because he was using an enhanced audio recording device. That would be something that we'd be looking at. Obviously, I'd have to know a lot more about the particular facts of the device, how it's being used. Um, but that is one of the reasons, I think, why uh, this suggested change has been made to the statute to better clarify, because a device like that was not contemplated when the statute was originally enacted. Now, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is within the statute a section that says, not otherwise able to be heard regarding to that. So that if the two cops, two people on the mm -hmm. other side of the street were shouting and screaming and making a loud noise that could be heard by a pit mic pickup of a commercially available, which I think is the language in here, commercially available device, um, that, then that section about enhanced doesn't apply. Well, the, the, yeah. real, the real question there comes down to whether or not there is any sort of expectation of privacy. And that the court typically will view that, in my limited experience, as both an objective and a subjective standard. Um, whether or not those individuals would have believed uh, that they could have been possibly intercepted. And whether to a reasonable person, as we all stand around and look at them, whether that belief is reasonable. So the court usually, typically uses a subjective and an objective standard to make that determination. Good. 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 Good.
Um, happy to work with the committee and. Are you his boss? Or <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we certainly want to participate with the committee. We just have a number of clients interested in this, and we're uh, just observing, and I'll report back to them. Thank you.